What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. Our first story is a sweet gift to Kino so he'll remember his baby days. The story of Babushka's magical doll is read by the author, Patricia Polacco. In our last story for today, read by Reggie Val Johnson, Tamika gets scared when she sees in her grandpa a face she's never seen before. Major funding for story time is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. friends over and they're bringing a gift we're going to surprise him oh, hi Mara hi did you know that today is my birthday uh yes I I, I did know Kino why well see look see I got all these books from my folks wow. can, can you get them out of there <sighs> yeah hey you know I haven't forgotten your birthday as a matter of fact I have made up a poem in your honor you did? Gosh, can I hear it? Oh, oh, sure. It goes like this. What is it? What is it? On your birthday, you are the brightest star. It's your chance to empty the cookie jar. You may pick dinner, stay up late, invite your friends to celebrate. These happy words I whisper in your ear. Because we've been together another year. Oh, there's one more thing I'd like to say. I'm really happy you visit every day. Oh, gee. Thanks, Mara. That's really, really nice. That's, that's the nicest thing anybody's ever, ever, ever done for me. Well, to top it all off, I'd like to read you a short story. It's called More, oh. More, More, Said the Baby. Oh, well, that's a baby book. Well, hold on. When you're older, this book will help you remember the tender love you received when you were a little guy. Well, okay. I'll give it a chance. <laughs> Good. It was written and illustrated by Vera B. Williams. Little Guy. This is Little Guy. Little Guy runs away so fast, Little Guy's daddy has to run like anything just to catch that baby up. But Little Guy's daddy catches that baby up all right. He throws that baby high and swings that baby all around. Oh, you're a great little guy, Little Guy's daddy sings to Little Guy. Just look at you with your perfect belly button. <laughs> right in the middle, right in the middle, right in the middle of your fat little belly. <laughs> then little guy's daddy brings that baby right up close and gives that little guy's belly a kiss right in the middle of the belly button. More, laughs little guy. More, more, more. Little pumpkin. Now this is little pumpkin. Little Pumpkin scoots away so fast, Little Pumpkin's grandma has to run like anything just to catch that baby up. But Little Pumpkin's grandma catches that baby up all right. She holds that baby nose to nose and swings that baby all around. Oh, my best little grandbaby, Little Pumpkin's grandma sings to Little Pumpkin. Just look at you with your 10 little toes right on the ends, right on the ends right on the ends of your two little feet. <laughs> Good enough to eat. Then Little Pumpkin's grandma brings that baby right up close and tastes each of Little Pumpkin's toes. More, laughs Little Pumpkin. More, more, more. Little Bird. 
Now comes Little Bird. Little Bird falls asleep so fast, Little Bird's mama has to move like anything just to catch that baby up. But Little Bird's mama lifts that baby in her arms all right. She rocks that baby back and forth and gets that baby ready for bed. Oh, my best little baby, Little Bird's mama sings to Little Bird. Just look at you with your two closed eyes. Right on either side. Right on either side. Right on either side of your neat little nose. <laughs> then Little Bird's mama brings that baby right up close. She gives that little bird a kiss right on each of her little eyes. Mmm, breathes little bird. Mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> Hi, make yourselves comfortable. Boy, <laughs> this birthday's turning out pretty good. A poem, stories, my friends come over, and I feel good. <laughs> Gee, it's too bad I only get one birthday a year. <laughs> I got Kino this birthday cake, but he doesn't know about it yet. So nobody tell him, okay? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Hey, as you can see, your surprise <gasps> has arrived. Whoa! <laughs> cool, oh, Matic! Let's open it. Okay, let's see what's in this okay, box. Okay, here we go. with your name and your picture on it so oh. that you can personalize all of your books. Oh, wow, that is cool. Let's give it a try on one of your new ones, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All you have to do is dip it in the ink pad. Oh, it's got a pen. And onto <gasps> the book. Wow! Hey, so that's how it works, huh? I like it. Hey, a million thanks to everybody. You're welcome. That is really neat. Gee whiz. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, hi, Patricia. Hi. We're celebrating Kino's birthday. Yep, it's my birthday today. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Kino. Would you like to hear a story? Sure, yeah. Patricia, did you bring one of the books that you wrote? I certainly did. It's called Babushka's Doll. Babushka means grandmother in Russian. And this story is a Russian story. Babushka also means this. How many of you have seen a scarf like this? Well, old ladies in Russia, or grandmothers, or babushkas, all wear these. Let me show you how my grandmother wore hers. She wore it tight against her forehead like this. She wrapped the edges around and then tied it, not on her neck, but on her chin. And she was a farmer, so when she went to work outside, she would take this part and push it out so the sun didn't shine in her eyes. And you'll notice in this book, the old babushka also is wearing a babushka scarf. Now, this story is not only about an old grandmother, but it's also about a little girl named Natasha. Can you say that? Natasha. Now, Natasha wasn't a bad girl, really, but Natasha did not like to hear the word no. She didn't like to hear the word wait, either. She'd visit her grandmother almost every weekend, and she was always so happy to see her. She'd throw out her arms and say, oh, babushka, babushka, I'm so happy to see you, and her grandmother would say, dear, come inside. After a while, though, Natasha got bored. And she'd stand on one foot and the other and say, there's nothing to do. And she went outside and saw her grandmother doing the wash. And she tugged on her dress and say, Babushka, Babushka, you see the swing hanging over in the tree? I want you to put me in the swing, and I want to swing. And I want to swing now. And her grandmother says, darling, can't you see? I have to do the wash. If I don't do it, it won't get done. Natasha went. But I want to swing, Babushka, and I want to swing now. When her grandmother hung the wash up, 
Natasha tugged at her skirt again and said, Babushka, look over by the fence. There's a goat cart. Hook the goat up to it and take me for a ride. I want to go now. I want to go now. Your grandmother said to her, Natasha, I have to hang up the clothes. The sun will only be out for a very short time. But I want to go now, Natasha said. Then, when her grandmother went out to feed the goats, <laughs> Natasha rubbed her tummy and said, Babushka, I'm hungry. I want to eat, and I want to eat now. And her grandmother said, but I have to feed the goats. They can't feed themselves. Do you think Natasha is a very nice little girl? No. 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 I don't think she's very polite, is she? Well, her grandmother, being a good grandmother, took her in the house and she fixed her some lunch. While they were eating lunch, Natasha looked up on the high shelf just above the table and she saw a doll. And she said to her grandmother, Babushka, whose dolly is that? And her grandmother said, you know, dear, that was my doll when I was a little girl just like you. Natasha said, oh, I'll bet you played with her all the time. The grandmother thought for a moment and said, you know, I only played with her once. Natasha sat up and said, once? Well, I want to play with a doll, and I want to play with her now. Do you think the grandmother let her play? Mm. No. She did, though. The grandmother took the doll down off from the shelf and she handed the dolly to Natasha. <laughs> and she said, there, dear, now I have to go down to the market to get vegetables. You play with the doll while I'm gone. And Natasha grabbed the doll and held it close. And the babushka walked out the front door. And the moment the door closed, the little doll got up off from the floor and started to walk around the room. She was alive. Now, at first, Natasha was scared. I would be if I saw a rag doll get up and walk around. But the little doll said, oh, Natasha, let's go play. I'll do all the things your grandmother wouldn't do with you. And Natasha thought for a moment and thought, OK. And they did. Well, they ran uphill, downhill, over hill, over dale, and they squealed and laughed and ran. Suddenly, the little doll stopped. She pointed at the tree where the swing was hanging. And she said, Natasha, there's a swing. Oh, put me in the swing, and I want you to push me in the swing, and I want you to swing me for a long time, and I'd like you to do it now. Natasha said, well, all right. So she put the little doll in the swing, and she pushed the doll and pushed the doll and pushed, and the doll was squealing higher, higher. Well. Natasha said, you know, I'm getting tired. I'd really like to stop pushing you now. And the little doll snapped at her and said, I want you to push me higher. And you keep swinging me as long as I want to swing. And I want to swing now. Then the little doll stopped. It pointed over at the fence. And it saw the goat cart. And it said, oh, Natasha, I know what you want to do for me now. Put me in that goat cart, hook up the goat, and take me for a ride, and I want to go now. Natasha put the goat on the goat cart, put the little dolly in the cart, and she pulled that goat uphill, downhill, over hill, over dale. And pretty soon, Natasha was getting tired because that goat was hard to pull. And she said, you know, I'd really like to stop. And the little doll pointed at her and said, you aren't going to stop until I tell you to stop. I want you to keep pulling that goat, and I want you to do it now. Then the little doll stopped. Suddenly, it rubbed its little belly, and it looked at Natasha and said, now I'm hungry, and I want to eat, and I want to eat now. Do you hear me? Now. Natasha said, but I'm just a little girl. I want to eat now, the doll said. So Natasha fixed her some lunch. 
She had noodles and peas and tea from the samovar and raisin cake. And the little doll started to eat and then took her little hands and picked up the noodles and squeezed them between her fingers and then slapped her hand in the middle of the soup and splattered it everywhere. Natasha thought, oh dear. The little doll stopped. And she looked at her own dress and said, oh no, I got my dress all dirty. Natasha, I want you to wash my dress, and I want you to wash it now. So, Natasha did as she asked. She washed the dress. She hung it out to dry. She even ironed the dress. It was hard work, but she got it done. When the little doll put the dress back on, she suddenly looked at herself and said, Oh, no! You didn't do it right! And then... The little doll puffed up full of air, screwed up her face and pinched her fist and jumped up and down and started to scream. She had a tantrum. How many of you have ever done that? I have. Well, Natasha started to cry. She says, you know, I'm just a little girl. I can't do all of these things. No matter what I do for you, you don't like it, and you want everything now, now, now. Just then, the front door opened. And when it opened, the little doll fell limp on the floor. And in walked Natasha's babushka. She saw Natasha crying and said, dear, what's the matter? And Natasha was saying, well, you see that doll? Well, when you left, she came to life, and she made me work, 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 and she made me do all sorts of things, and she wanted everything now, now. Her grandmother looked at the doll and said, now, Natasha, she looks just like a plain old doll to me. She's not moving. Are you sure you didn't have a very bad dream? Natasha thought for a moment. She said, well, maybe I did. And her grandmother gave her a kiss, said, why don't you go out and play? Natasha thought she went out to play. As she went outside and the door closed behind her, the grandmother picked the doll up off from the floor and put her back on the shelf. As she did this, the grandmother said to the doll, you've had quite a day with that little girl, haven't you? The little doll came to life again, leaned forward to old Babushka, and gave her a wink. And Babushka went on being a wonderful grandmother. The doll went back to being just a plain old doll. And Natasha, what do you think happened to Natasha? What? She wasn't bratty anymore. She wasn't a brat anymore. Absolutely right. Do you think the grandmother ever played with this doll when she was a little girl? She says so in the story. Just once. Just once. Why do you think Grandma only played once with that doll? Because he wants everything. He wants to go to her and dad. The doll did the same thing to her. But why would the doll do that? Because she was being so, so greedy. She wanted everything her way. Absolutely. I want this. I want that. Give me this. Me, I me, me, I, I, I. Yeah. Wasn't she was not a good little girl. She wasn't a bad girl. But she forgot her manners for a little time. Gosh, thanks for reading that story for my birthday, Patricia. Hey, I have a neat idea. Why don't We're we... We're going on a picture book visit? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm ready. Let's go. Hey, it's Reggie. Reading to Jamie and Brighton. I wonder what story they chose. Story is called Grandpa's Face by Eloise Greenfield, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. Here we go. Tamika loved her grandpa. She loved the quiet way he talked and the surprise of his loud laughter. <laughs> she loved the stories he told, long stories that he sang and talked a little bit each day, until he reached the end. Most of all, though, Tamika loved her grandpa's face. Grandpa's face told everything about him. It was always changing from glad, to worried, to funny, 
<laughs> Just sad. Grandpa could ask a question without saying one word. And even when he was mad with Tamika, his face was a good face. And the look of his mouth and eyes told her that he loved her. You shouldn't have done that, Tamika, Grandpa would say. And Tamika would tell him she was sorry. And then she would kiss the sturdy brown of his face. Sometimes Tamika and Grandpa would go out together, just the two of them. They would leave Mom and Daddy at home. They'd go for a long walk, a talk walk, Grandpa called it. They'd walk through the park or just around the neighborhood and talk about things that they saw and felt and remembered. In the summer, Grandpa was an actor. And some Saturday afternoons, he and his friend, Miss Gladys, they would take Tamika to the theater to watch him act on the stage. If Mom and Daddy said that the play wasn't too grown up, the theater was Tamika's favorite place to go. Make-believe things happened there. She would sit in the front row and watch Grandpa turn into another person, changing his face, the way he walked and talked and sang. And even when he turned into somebody else's grandpa, Tamika didn't mind. It looked true, and it felt true, but she knew it was just a play. And when it was over, and all the actors came out to bow and bow and wave, she would clap so hard her hands hurt. One day, Tamika went to Grandpa's room to ask for a story. She stopped at the door because Grandpa was rehearsing. He had his book in his hand, and he was reading his lines aloud. Then he stopped reading, and he looked into the mirror, slowly changing his face to a face that Tamika had never seen before. Yeah. It was a cold, hard face. It had a tight mouth and cold, cold eyes. It was a face that could never love her or anyone. Tamika stood watching as Grandpa changed his face back and read some more lines from his book. Then she went to her room and sat on her bed. Her stomach was filled with scared places that made her want to cry. She had not known that Grandpa could look like that. And now that she did know, she couldn't be sure that he might not someday look at her with that face that could not love. She got out a jigsaw puzzle and played with it quietly until Mom and Daddy had finished cooking dinner. Then she washed her hands and sat down at the table. But she didn't feel like eating. She felt like doing bad things, all the things that Grandpa didn't like. So she made a hill out of her mashed potatoes, and let her green peas roll down the hill. Stop playing in your food, Tamika, Mama said, and eat your dinner. Tamika looked at Grandpa's face, and it was still the face she knew. So she put a fork full of greens in her glass and watched her water turn a muddy green. Yeah. Then she tapped on her plate with her spoon while the grown-ups were trying to talk. I think you want to leave the table, Daddy said. No, Daddy, Tamika whined. I think you'd better, Tamika, Daddy said. Go to your room now, and you can eat by yourself later. Tamika began to cry a little. She looked at her mother and her father, but when she started to look at Grandpa, too, she felt the scared places in her stomach again. And she was afraid to look. Then she cried harder. She stood up crying loud and not watching what she was doing. And her hand bumped her glass and knocked it over, sending green water splattering onto Grandpa's shirt and across the tablecloth. Oh. Tamika, what in the world, Grandpa said. Tamika turned and looked at him then, expecting to see the face she had seen in the mirror. But it was Grandpa's face she saw, Grandpa's mad face. But it was still the one that loved her. Mom and Daddy looked worried. Tamika, Mama said, what's this all about? Tamika hung her head and didn't answer. Stop crying now, Daddy said. He wiped her face while Grandpa went to change his shirt. Then Grandpa came back, and he took her by the hand. Let's go, he said. Time for a talk walk. Tamika and Grandpa walked toward the park, holding hands. Now, tell me what's wrong, Grandpa said. Tamika's hand felt good inside Grandpa's, but she wasn't sure she felt like talking. She watched the lines and the sidewalk for a little while. Then she said, 
You have another face, Grandpa. I do, Grandpa said. Uh-huh. I saw it in the mirror, Tamika said. And it's a real mean face, too. They sat down on the grass, and Tamika let the words spill out. The mouth is mean, and the eyes are mean. And I don't like that face, Grandpa, she said. But that's just pretending, Tamika, Grandpa said. You know that. But it might not always be pretend, Tamika said. Grandpa thought for a moment. Oh, I see, he said. Then he put his hands around Tamika's face and made her look at him. I love you, he said. I could never, ever look at you like that, no matter what you do. You hear? Are you sure, Tamika said? As sure as I am that you love me, Grandpa said. Tamika knew that she was safe then. Safe enough to hug Grandpa and kiss the sturdy brown of his face. Grandpa hugged her back. Let's go home now, he said. On the way home, Grandpa stopped to talk to an old friend. But Tamika didn't pay any attention to what they were saying. She was much too busy watching a wave of laughter as it spread across her grandpa's face. <laughs> nice story, wasn't it? Yep. I liked it. Mmm, that was a tasty story treat. Uh, Mara, even though it's the end of story time for today, can we please keep the party going? Please, please, please. Oh, of course, Kino. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here is your birthday cake, Kino. Whoa! Oh, man, let's dig in. Hey, thanks for the surprises, everybody. Until next time, keep, keep a, a story, story in, in your, your heart. Do svidaniya, buddies. <laughs> That's goodbye in Russian. <laughs> okay, I gotta make a wish. All right. Okay, I'm in my wish. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> oh, very good. I got it. <laughs> Today's storytime books are More, More, More Said the Baby by Vera B. Williams, Babushka's Doll by Patricia Polacco, and Grandpa's Face by Eloise Greenfield, illustrated by Floyd Cooper. You can find these and other books at your local library. Major funding for storytime is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. Storytime is a production of KCET Los Angeles.